Hello again, this is News Today. Now, a week ago, workers of Metro Mass Transit embarked on a few hours of strike to demand the resignation of the deputy managing director and the board chair. The intervention of the transport minister saw the strike called off after some six hours. Just before the week ended, President Mohammed dissolved the then board and asked the managing director and his deputy to step aside for investigations to proceed. Now, uh, my colleague Latif Idrisu has visited the main yard of the transport company and has joined me as the transport minister has been addressing workers at the yard. Hello, Latif. Hello, Tony. Uh, tell us what you have heard today. Yeah, um, today at the MMT office, the, the Minister of Transport Festival visited the place and inaugurated a new MD. So a new MD has been introduced today at the MMT head office. Um, he is a person of Brigadier General Islam Ben Korte. Now, he, he also delivered his own speech to, to the media. But before that, the Minister of Transport uh, the fact of all, give a very, you know, just, I mean, thing to the media because the MD also came in to, to say exactly what he's bringing on board. Can we take a listen? Can we take a listen to the Minister of Transport? Yeah, so now, let's take a listen to the Minister of Transport. Right. Right. Is everybody fine? Yeah. We thank God. We thank God that you are all fine. At least today is better than last week. <laughs> uh, this is just a short ceremony. We were here exactly a week ago, and we promised to come back to you by the end of the month. Luckily, during the consultation and the discussions, immediate action was taken which culminated in a, a statement that was issued by the Office of the President, signed by the Chief of Staff, Mr. Prosper Bani, on Thursday. Thursday. On Thursday. So we are here for a short ceremony. But before I do that, I would like to appeal to all of you. There's time for everything. You have had the privilege to be working at the Metro Mass Transit Limited. We all belong to different political affiliations. Some of us PNC, some of us CPP, some of us DPP, I mean NDP, all the political parties in Ghana have, I'm sure, have representation here. But when we come here to Metro Mass, this is where we earn our daily bread. Our loyalty should be to the Metro Mass Transit Limited only, not any political party. Because if we bring our political affiliations on board, we cannot be united to work for the transformation of this company. So let's, when we get to the gate, let's put our political codes there. Come and work. When you're going back, you can carry it home. I'm not preventing or denying anybody the opportunity to belong to his or his choice of political party. But when we enter the premises of Metro Mass Transit Limited, we are here to serve Metro Mass Transit Limited. <laughs> I am here to convey the contents of the statement to you and We've had discussions with the, the management, the both union leaders, and there's need to introduce to you the acting MD. You are aware that your MD and the DMD, apart from the dissolution of the board, have also been asked to step aside while we conduct independent investigations into the operations of Metro Mass which will include the contents of your petition. So please, let's exercise patience for that process to be completed. Meanwhile, you cannot stay here or you cannot continue with your work fatherless. You cannot be fatherless children. So an interim father has been given you in the person of Brigadier General I.B. Korte, retired. 
He's here with me. Chobwe, when we're behind the doors, he said something which really inspired me. He said he's a people's man. When somebody says he's a people's man, it means from head to toe. When you come to him, he's prepared to listen to you. Let's avoid the media war. The media is here, but they've never been able to solve our problems. So let's address our concerns to him. If it's beyond him, we will intervene from the ministry. So let's give him the necessary support so that he'll be able to hold the fort until we conclude the investigations. On this note, I thank you and I wish you a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Right, Latif is still here with us. He's over the telephone. Latif, what, what were the workers' response to this? I don't care what What were the workers' response to the new managing director? Yeah, you know, as, as the minister introduced, I mean, this is uh, the fifth month, and it's going to work with... But I mean, what the, did the, the workers say about him? What did you gather from the workers? Hello, I'm asking what you gathered from the workers about the new managing director. Yeah, um, the workers looking at, I mean, they are body language and everything want to tell that what, what they have is a bit of relief. They feel that now they can have closure uh, on the issues they raised that resulted in the strike action. So, so they were a bit relieved about the fact that now a new MD has come in place and they, they, they hope that this to take on the issues and then they will get results. But he also has something to say and I want to speak and listen to what right. he said. Right. Quickly. To put the mic down because I've been trained to use my voice. <laughs> but, but as it is, I have to follow convention so I'm using the microphone. My full name is Brigadier General Ishmael Ben Kwoti. My friends call me IB for short. And I told the, the, I told the management and the unions that I am retired, but I'm not tired. <laughs> and that is why I have been brought here to work with you. In the military, we serve. We don't lord it over people. So forget about the fact that I have a military background. I am coming to work with you to raise the productivity of Metro Mass Transit to a different level. I am here in an acting capacity. Nobody knows how long this investigation is going to take. We will all hope that it will be finished soon. But then I'm coming with a vision to transform the operations of this company. In transforming the operations of this company, we need efficiency. We need to look at reliability. We need to look at affordability. And then make sure that we make MMTL, the safest transport organization in Ghana. I'm going to meet with the executives again, and at the appropriate time, I'll come around you and tell you exactly what we shall do. But all that I have said cannot come about if there is no unity or there is no peace within the labor front. All I ask for is your support, and together, we will raise MMTL to a different level. Thank you very much. Well, uh, away from that, we can look at the central medical store and uh, issues following the fire there. Now, several government officials directly involved with the management of the central medical stores face interdiction as Health Minister Kwikwajima Mensa is set to make an announcement later today. The facility was consumed by fire last week, destroying medical supplies and equipment worth over 230 million Ghana cities. Now, joining you sources close to the ministry indicate that a number of top directors at the Ghana Health Service will be affected. Now, these top officials include Director of Procurement and Supply with the Ministry of Health, Samuel Bois. Director of Supply Stores and Drug Management with the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Kwesi Adai Donko, and Head of Stores at the Central Medical Stores, Abdul Karim Idrisu.
Story News' Chen Chen Hene Boateng has been following this beat and he's joined me uh, now over the telephone with some fresh updates. Hello, Kwabna. Hello, Kevin. What do you have to share? Well, I'm currently here at the Central Medical Store here at Tema, uh, the facility that belongs to the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service. Uh, in fact, a particular state of the facility, I must say, is an ISO. I mean, when you get into the facility, when you enter the facility, uh, what you just see is debris. And debris you can even see, I mean, part of the structure that was broken down uh, due to the, the fire that was actually got to the premises just about a week ago, uh, I still there, the debris, everything is still there. You can even see some uh, roofing seats uh, that have been called together, as well as some, uh, uh, how do you call this? Uh, anyway, yeah. You can see some of the faces as well as some pillars here, some pillars that have been broken down. Uh, they are all here, mashed up together. Uh, on arrival, you I expect a number of trucks in there, about three or four of them. Uh, trucks that are conveying material from, from the premises to obviously uh, a, a dump site or some or a landfill site of some sort. Uh, there's an like, excavator that's currently here that's uh, digging up the, the, the way that they're moving to these particular uh, trucks. Uh, for onward transmission. Now, one very interesting thing we've gathered so far, credible information joining us has intercepted that, that uh, there was some sort of a cartel that was actually uh, doing things here. Now, let me give you the genesis of uh, the information as we gather it now. Uh, right. Before the committee was actually formed uh, in January, in January 2014, to actually uh oversee the day-to-day -day management of the store. No, so, so wait, one at a time. A committee so, was formed sometime January 2010 to January oversee 2014, 2014 to oversee yes. activities at the Central Medical to Store. To the day-to-day -day management of the Central Medical Store. Okay. Now, the committee was uh, it was a four-member committee. It was chaired by one Basel Lahiable, who appears to be a private consultant. Uh, his specialty, we are told, is in supply chain. Uh, he was the chairman of the of the committee, we are told that another member of the committee was uh, a pharmacist from the Ministry of Health. He represented the Ministry of Health on that committee. Uh, he was from the Office of the Chief Director, so we gather. Uh, he was in what you see. That's the name we got. Again, there was one Dr. Siama who represented Kolebu. He was also on the board, as well as one Dr. Adai Donko. Uh, he's with the supply chain of the Ghana Health. Now we are told these were the people who were put together on that committee to actually facilitate uh, the date it mm. running of affairs here. Now they were supposed to be. We are told they were. They used to meet uh, the the workers here every Tuesday. So every Tuesday they brief the workers on things that are about to happen, and the workers also come with their complaints and all. Uh, but anytime there was there were such meetings, we are told just about two of the members showed up, and anytime they showed up. Uh, well, not much input was taken from the workers. I mean, it was more or less, okay, we are here to manage the thing, this is what we are doing, and that's it. Just blanket statements. People weren't uh, allowed to actually make any recommendations or say anything, any such thing. Now, there was, uh, to the fire, I've been speaking to some workers who are actually here. I've seen most of them around. They are just filing away, sitting on the tree, chatting and all. Uh, most of them I've spoken to. They've actually alluded to this, this thing, they alluded to this thing, that uh, for the issue of the expired drugs, the drugs that were here, mm. most of them say they do not suspect, ah, but this is what happened. Now, uh, there's, there's some storage facility, when you get to main, the main warehouse, on your extreme right, uh, there's some storage, there's, those are warehouses now. We are told there was some space at the very last end of it. So, uh, some of the products were actually stored. Now, we are told when this committee came into office, uh, they, 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 for some reason, uh, all those things need to be brought out and they need to be put at a different location. So they were actually put close to a point which has, as, uh, as we are told, has always served a, a burning point here at the facility. Mm. It was actually, they, they've been burning here for years, that's what they tell us. Uh, anytime there are some things they need to burn, they burn at this particular facility. So they burn here. Uh, they actually showed me a structure that was erected here mm. just for that purpose. Dr. Kobla, let's, let's go back a little. Is it the same committee that you describe as a cartel? The committee we are told, we are told the cartel mm. 
emanates from well, it, it, it suggests that it's about uh, some people within the committee. Now, there are four. Mm. As to who really uh, the bus stops with, I can tell. But this is the information we get. Now, let me, let me, let me brief you on this particular one. We are told uh, sometime in December or so, uh, Global Fund actually brought in some drugs, some anti-malaria drugs. Uh, we are told it was a, a huge amount of money that actually went into that. For, it was actually for the National Malaria Control Program, mm -hmm. and that's actually headed by Dr. Constance uh, Basplanch. Now, we are told that uh, Dr. Constance Basplanch actually went on leave. Now, that is when the real thing happened. When she went on leave, we are told someone who represented her and who signed on her behalf. Uh, mind you, when, when the, with the National Malaria Control Program, uh, they had come for supplies from the central medical stores as well. But they just come for uh, just a small one, say about 200 pieces or 300 pieces, and they do not pay for them. They do not pay for them, they just come for them. So when when this lady actually went out, Dr. Constance Bakhtang, you are told, when she actually uh, went on leave, whoever came on board is accused to have uh, teamed up with certain people and were actually uh, making requests as huge as 4,000 uh, anti-malaria drugs. And if I say 4,000, the street value about 2 million Ghana mm. And uh, the exact info I picked is that uh, the, an administrator at the National Malaria Control Program was actually making these requests, these particular requests. Now, early December, particularly on the 4th of December, we are told about 4,000 worth of those anti-malaria drugs, worth about 2 million Ghana cities, were sent. We actually moved from here, transported from here for free under this provision Tr of the trans acting head. Transported to where? We do not know where they were transported to. Initially, the arrangement was that they would be transported to the, uh, mm. the NMCP, that's the National Malaria Control Program, and some also went to the 37 military hospital. Apparently, no such order had, had come from those quarters. They didn't get any such thing. And so, what is the what what is the point your source is trying to make with this information that this fire must must have been a, a cover up? He doesn't suspect the cover up because uh, subsequently, I mean, if 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 you did something like this, it could bring about a lot of eyes on you. So this is something apparently that has been happening for some time. Just that is uh, it's been a now, mm. and now it seems. There's no record. And we are even told people who even tried resisting. I mean, the store officers who mm. questioned some of the requests. We actually reached out for some moved to places. I mean, we don't even know where they are now. Right. Right. Yes. We'll we, we leave it here for now. We'll continue this conversation in subsequent broadcasts. But we're not done with the subject. Samuel Boati is with the, his greater Accra chair of the coalition of NGOs. If, uh, he's, he's here to share a thought or two with us on the subject. He's joined me over the telephone. Hello, Samuel. Hello. What does the, or what's been the interpretation the coalition of NGOs has made into uh, th this fire, the central medical store so far? Yeah, thank you very, very much and thanks for the opportunity to, to also speak on this issue. Actually, as it is, the coalition itself received this news with, with quite some shock. Mm. Uh, for us, this, this news also came, also sent quite some serious into our spine because as a major umbrella organization, that is NGOs working in health, we see this accident as something which is quite of some gargantuan proportion, some mm. disaster which we cannot deal with. However, you know, we, we, we have also looked at the issues. We have looked at what, for us, our concern actually is about what this is supposed is likely to have, the impact is likely to have on already the health system that we have, which is not so much perfect or not in the place where it has to be. And then also the ordinary persons with respect to drugs, medicines, and supplies that all of us get from the district and all other facilities. You understand? Mm. So as we speak, we have not delved into whether this thing is asking or what is bringing us mm. to that point. But our concern is what emergency preparedness plan, what procurement plans are in place, mm. what could be done quickly so we could restock or get some kind of emergency standby units that can feed into the system without necessarily creating a shortage, okay? Those are the issues we want to look at. And that, 
Also, together with several other issues we're raising, S Samuel, even in a press conference. Samuel, that is Samuel out. thank you very much for your time. Samuel Boatin is Greater Accra Chair of the coalition of NGOs here in Ghana. And our top stories, there's are several officials in charge of the central medical stores face interdiction. Meanwhile, the BNI picks up 10 persons as investigations continue into uh, the fires at the central medical stores. Minister of Transport admonishes workers of the Metro Mass Transit Limited to shun politically motivated worker agitation and give interim managing director the needed support. I'm grateful you stayed through. Thank you very much for your company. My name is Kimini Yamani Yamana. Good afternoon.